I'm sure those who watch this channel regularly know by now that I love gadgets. If it's not radios, it's things like high power torches, telescopes and binoculars. You really can't beat a good pair of binoculars. I've got a few different ones and they're really handy for all sorts of things, looking out to sea being one of them. Recently I picked up the Owler 1 from Wildgarder, a fantastic pair of binoculars for getting into night vision on a budget. These are designed for both daytime and nighttime use and they record and play back what you see in both video and photo format. The Owler 1's optical zoom and 4x digital zoom allow you to view far away objects clearly and they're perfect for all sorts of applications. I'd use them for things such as camping, marine, transmitter site recce's and all that sort of stuff. They have a built in 5 watt infrared LED and an 850 nanometer illuminator so you can observe targets in fully dark conditions at a range of 1640 feet or 500 meters. Wildgarder claim the optimal distance is around 200 meters and I'd have to agree. Of course you can switch off the infrared at the push of a button for daytime use with an advertised range of 9800 feet or 3000 meters but of course you can see more. The screen resolution is 854 by 480. The built in TFT LCD widescreen is actually 3 inches but is converted to 4 inches with the use of a convex lens. You can watch videos and images back through the display too. Their 4x digital zoom and 20x optical zoom allows you to zoom in and out on an object or just record while zoomed out. They have a 30mm objective aperture and a 1.8 degree to 68 degree angle of view. One thing that sets poor quality and good quality binoculars apart is the optics and their coatings. Aula 1's fully multi-layer coated optical elements increase light transmission and reduce glare and just remember you look at the screen not through the eyepieces. They have an infrared sensitive CMOS sensor and CCD auxiliary lighting and record good quality video during the day and night at 2592 by 1944 pixels with a photo resolution of 1280 by 720. They also record audio. They'll run for 6 hours continuously with the IR Illuminator on. The storage capacity is up to a 64GB TF card and they also use 8 AA batteries which are not included and can run off a 5 to 6 volt power bank. On the top are 6 buttons which are used to change all of the functions and settings. You have a power button which also dims the display, a menu button, a mode button for switching between photo and video, Digital zoom in which goes back to zero when you reach the top level of digital zoom, infrared on and off and shot for taking pictures or video. This is also the OK button for the menus. In the menus you can navigate using the zoom and IR buttons as up and down. You can change the language, resolution, image burst quantity, video length, sound on or off, date and time, date and time stamp, date format, display brightness, backlight on and off time, auto power off, card cycle, card format, revert to default setup and view the software version. I set mine up out of the box without any instructions, it's really quite simple. On the side is the SD card slot, USB-C for external power and HDMI mini for hooking these up to a TV. So looking at the optics you have a near and far knob which is for optical zoom. You then turn the clarity adjustment knob to focus the image. This takes some getting used to but it's easy once you get the hang of it. I usually zoom first and then focus. On the other side is another near and far knob which is for tightly focusing the IR LEDs which is handy depending on what you're viewing. The LED is inside the eyepiece and it would be good if there was some way of diffusing it to create an even wider light spread at shorter ranges. I suppose you could use an external IR lamp if you wanted to. In the box you get the Aula 1, a USB cable, an SD card, a user manual, a neck strap, a cleaning cloth and it all comes in this really cool storage bag. Here's some video side by side with my Nikon P1000. It's important to remember that one is a binocular and the other is a high-end camera at four times the cost. I'm sure you'll agree though, it's really not bad at all. 
So in all, I think these are a really good piece of kit. I wasn't sure what to expect in terms of video quality. I was expecting really grainy video, but it's actually pretty good. They're also weighty and quite solid. Now, like any binocular, you have to be careful not to knock or drop them. I've had pairs in the past where the optics and prisms have been knocked out of alignment, making them pretty much useless. So, if you're buying something like this, you have to look after them. Manual focus can be a hard one to get right. Autofocus would be an amazing addition, but of course that would ramp up the cost considerably. Getting the focus right on a fast moving target isn't always easy, however a slow moving target such as this prickly fellow with the use of a tripod was really easy. So that's the Owler 1 from Wildgarder.